Hello, and welcome back to Prism and Company. My name is Colin, and on the docket today is some introductions, because I am jumping into a, a big series on the Wild Unknown Archetypes deck. Now, if you're not familiar, this is the newest deck from Kim Kranz. She is known for her Wild Unknown family of products, like the Wild Unknown Tarot and the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Oracle. They always have a mouthful. Now, uh, I, I recently got this guy, and it's really interesting. It's very different from anything else I have in the collection. It is round, first of all, which is definitely new to me, but I don't know, kind of intoxicating in a way. It does really trigger my OCD because I very much like cards to be up and down. And even like a Marseille deck, it's difficult sometimes to tell which way's up and which way's down, and it drives me crazy. That's actually one of the reasons... I like this particular Marseille so much because there's lots of little errors, so you can always tell which way's up if you know where the errors lie. Anyway, though, um, it's very easy to reorient a circular deck if you need to. The number will always be on top, the name will be on the bottom, uh, except for the very last few cards. Anyway, um, what we're doing over the next six videos is taking a look at the entire deck and talking through what each of these archetypes mean one by one. You know, and I'm coming straight from the guidebook here, so I will try and do my best to condense this information down into what these mean. And because there are 78 of these cards, I thought it would be super duper fun to compare them to tarot. One card for one archetypes card for one tarot card. And for each of them, I pulled out the uh, Wade Smith, the uh, Marseille, <laughs> the Thoth. My brain just shut down there for a second. So all the same card, just three different versions of it so we can pick and pull little pieces out of it and take a look. It should be a total blast. And I've actually not lined this up. Looks like there's plenty of room for everything, which is delightful. Now, this deck, the Archetypes deck, is very, very different from a tarot deck. When I got it, I kind of thought that there would be a one-to-one -one correlation, that each of the 78 cards would kind of be based off of an idea of a tarot card. Number one here would relate maybe to the fool or the magician. I wasn't exactly sure. That turned out not to be the case at all. And honestly, I'm glad. Uh, I think, you know, having decks that do different things is really important and really amazing. But it made it really fun and really challenging to try and match it up to tarot cards because those, you know, ideas are very different. It creates this weird dissonance of like, well, okay, where exactly do things fall? So as I go through this, note that there are probably you know, infinite correct answers to how to do this exercise. And if you have this deck, I highly recommend this exercise too, because it was a huge blast to do. Um, but know that I leaned heavy into traditional meanings of cards, into stereotypes, into the images on the card itself. I had to pull something because every single card needed a corresponding tarot card and they could only all be lined up once. And let me tell you, some of them got very specific in the, the avenue that I took to get from point A, tarot, to point B, the archetype deck, or vice versa. Um, if you have different cards that you would associate these with, please let me know. Um, we're going 13 cards at a time because a, a deck of tarot cards, or this deck, divides itself perfectly into six piles of 13, and that feels like a good meaty chunk. And I would just love to know. There's actually some cards like the Hierophant, for example, that would slot beautifully into like four or five of these archetype cards, but I could only put it with one. So that means that some odd choices had to go with others. If there are cards, like I said, that you think, oh, the Hierophant needs to go here, let me know. Those kind of uh, conversations can be absolutely fascinating to have, and I would love to engage. Um, that being said, I'm going to leave all of this introduction disclaimery stuff here in the intro video. So this is a perfect spot to start if you are just jumping in. And then I'm going to let the next six videos stand on their own. So I'm just going to jump right in, start talking about the card and their corresponding tarot associations. Should be a total blast. Um, one last thing before I leave you though, I did just want to mention the actual images on these cards themselves. They're very different from Kranz's other work in two major ways. Of course, they're round, so just compositionally, they're going to look and feel very different. Round items feel more holistic almost because it feels like a planet or you know a circle. They're, it's a very kind of Ouroboros style composition where things are constantly like feeding and rolling into each other. And 
there's a lot of collage used in this deck. So I assume she actually cut out pictures from paper because there's a lot of very rough edges. And I'll be honest, not all the collage is my favorite in this deck. In fact, there's some of it that I really dislike. Um, a lot of these cards feel hastily put together or rushed. This is not one of them. This card is beautiful. It's got this very lovely subtle watercolor on the top, a ton of beautiful pen and ink, and then this lovely collage nestled all into the center. Not all of the cards are that successful. I'm gonna try and leave that for another video, perhaps a critique on the deck, because there's so much that I love, but there's also a lot that I think is lacking. And I really just wanna focus in on the meanings. If I spill over into that, you'll just have to roll with me because I don't know, I'm an artist. I like to talk about images, so we'll see how it goes. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody, and I really, really hope you enjoy the series. Bye-bye.